Piața jocurilor video prinde contur și în Timișoara. Cu un master de gaming pregătit de Universitatea Politehnică Timișoara, tinerii ce îl vor coordona au creat deja un joc nou. Vorbim despre un RPG creat de la zero de Raul, Alex și Răzvan. Doi programatori, unul artist grafic, împreună au muncit un an pentru a face un demo pentru jocul lor. Iar experiența vă este împărtășită într-un video de unde puteți afla secretele din spatele creării unui RPG. We spent the last year developing our top-down hack and slash RPG. We are Raul and Alex from Inner Chaos Games, and this is everything we learned during an entire year of development for our game. After spending a few years making games, participating in game jams, and learning game design and programming, we finally got together to form a team. Our goal would be to create, finish, and publish our first game. Since both of us have a background in programming, and the art we can make is similar to what a four-year-old can draw, we realized our team really needed an artist. That's how we got Razvan on board. Now that our team was complete, we took all our favorite games and tried to see what made each one great, what we could learn from them, and where we could improve. These are the main game design pillars that we came up with. Since comedy style spend over 90% of your time in a hack and slash game, we considered this the core pillar of our game. I'm a huge fan of games like Diablo or Path of Exile, however I want an RPG game where skill plays a bigger role in combat than player stats. This is why Hades was our main inspiration for the combat. With its fast paced hack and slash combat, it was the perfect starting point for the combat system of our game. Replayability has always been a huge factor for great action RPG games. The feeling that I get when leveling up a fresh new character with the high hopes of making the most insane game-breaking build is what always drives me back to those games. There is nothing I love more than the sheer amount of possibilities when crafting your own unique build with your own unique playstyle. If you think about it, we realize that the games we spend most of our time playing are multiplayer games. Playing with friends with builds that complement each other's playstyle is what takes a great game like Diablo and ranks it up to 11. So there we were, with the high hopes of creating our ambitious dream game. However, we would soon realize that making such a game is way harder than it looks. I mean look at this, it took us one month of work and all we had was this? As you can probably tell, this was not really what we had envisioned, not even close. But hey, at least it's working, right? Well, sort of. There is absolutely no player feedback when hitting an enemy. It feels like I'm hitting the air in front of him and he somehow does his take hit animation. The attack animations are also quite slow and lack impact. Usually the hit of the attack is supposed to be a lot faster than the rest of the animation in order for the attack to feel like it has weight. But it wasn't all bad. One thing we got right is the logic for handling combo attacks. It allows us to simply describe the combos inside a JSON file so any changes to them can be done quickly. We still use this logic even once One year later. By this point, it was clear that the game sucked because it did not have enough mechanics. So let's add more enemy variety. What the let's add a bunch of spells that you can cast to add variety to the combat. Let's add a very complex energy system where you power up depending on five types of energy that you pick up during combat. No! Stop it! Get some help! As a wise man once said, you can't make a diamond by polishing a turd. In other words, no matter how much you polish your game, if the core is bad, the game is still going to be bad. We spent all this time trying to add more mechanics to a game that did not have solid core gameplay. So it was time to scrap all these new systems and return to the basics. After doing some research, I stumbled upon an article called Anatomy of a Successful Attack. Here, the author identifies what drives the feel of an attack. There are three key elements you have to master. The character animations, the visual effects, and the sound effects. The article also provides a small demo which breaks down individual components of an attack and shows each one of them independent of each other. The red ones are absolutely necessary in all cases. As animations are a key aspect of how combat is going to feel, it's important to get them right. Simply using random animations from Mixamo won't cut it. Turns out that if you don't have an experienced animator, making animations is really hard. It's quite a slow process and, as a beginner, your animations are most likely going to feel unnatural, weird... I mean, look at this. We did not have the time to learn how to animate from scratch, so it was time to look for an alternative solution. Welcome to the world of motion capture! And no, you don't need one of those expensive motion capture suits to do it. Simply using one or two depth cameras like the one a Kinect has plus the right software can do wonders. So after spending $50 on two used Kinect sensors and a bunch of time trying to find how to import those animations in Blender, we were able to create animations for every character in our game. We might make a more in-depth video about this topic later. Let us know in the comments if you're interested. Something we spend way more time on than I thought you would is level design. I mean, how hard could it be, right? Just throw in a couple of prefabs and some filler objects and boom, you got level. 
Oh boy, I really wish that was the case, but... Nope. Upon further research, we learned that there are many things to consider when designing levels. These mainly apply to action games with melee combat similar to our game. Try to keep the combat area as flat as you can. Having elevation will prove to be a nightmare. Don't believe me? Here's just a short list of problems we encountered with elevation. Player jumping in the air from some weird collision. Projectiles bumping into stairs. Aim indicators going through the terrain. The size of the room you fight in affects the gameplay more than you think. Let's see the following scenario. You have three fat ugly frogs. Sorry, I mean you have three beautiful frogs in this room waiting for you. What would you do? The right answer is just walk around them, of course. Big rooms allow the player to run around, which leads to downtime for the player, which makes the combat feel like crap. Mike Berghead wrote a great article on this topic if you are interested. Of course there are many more things to talk about, but then this video would be a few hours long. And who's got time for that? That's why we're starting this YouTube channel, where we will post more videos about the journey of making games. Stay tuned for more and subscribe if you haven't done so already. You don't wanna miss what we'll post next.